So, um, speaking of studies, there was a Strava social network study. They analyzed 31.5 million activities. And they found the day that most people give up their New Year's resolution. And that day is January 12th, today. Today's like give up Sunday. You know, shouldn't put it that way. You know, there's another study that found it takes people um, anywhere from 18 to 254 days in order to develop a new habit, depending on the person and the habit. And um, Jesus, in the parable of the seeds, in Matthew and in Luke and Mark, he talked about people who received the word of God with great joy and enthusiasm, but then they didn't develop deep roots. They didn't change their thinking, their desires, their actions, and they ended up giving up because they ran into problems or persecutions or distractions or just other desires that became more important to them. You know, and, and giving up could mean leaving church. But, you know, giving up also could mean losing your enthusiasm and joy, where you're not really growing anymore. You're not really serving. You're just not really into it. You don't want to fall away, but you're not into it. That's, that's like giving up also. In Luke 8, 13, or 8, 15, excuse me, Jesus said the seeds that fell on good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word cling to it, and then they patiently produce a huge harvest. It takes time to produce a huge harvest. A huge harvest is a lot of, because it's Jesus who said huge, so that's pretty huge. A huge harvest is a lot of the life and ministry of Jesus in your life and ministry. Now, uh, probably um, some of you know that the Bible that was originally written in other languages, the Old Testament in Hebrew, the New Testament in Greek. And the Greek word that they translated patiently in that passage is the word hupomone, which also can be translated patient endurance or perseverance. Uh, you need some hupomone to finish your New Year's resolutions, right? <laughs> And you also need a lot of hoopamone to finish your new life resolution that I'm going to follow Christ for my whole life. Uh, that word means the voluntary, daily, and courageous acceptance of hard and difficult things for the sake of honor, honoring God and other people, and for the sake of usefulness. It's, it's not like its evil twin, stubbornness. You know, stubbornness is a form of persistence, but it persists even in air. It doesn't, it won't give up its, the air of its ways. But hupomone is different from that. Not only does it not give up, but it uses hardships to keep growing up. While it's not giving up, it's growing up. Now, Jesus says in John 16, 33, because, you know, um, this world is a sinful world. Satan has power in this world, the Bible says still. And so the world, the flesh, and the devil are fighting against us. So Jesus said, here on earth, you're going to have, he's talking to his believers who are doing God's will. Here on earth, you're going to have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Now, how does Jesus overcome trials and sorrows and, and overcome the world? Well, part of it is hoopamone. It's, it's a really good product that I'm selling. 1999. I'm like, you. <laughs> It says in James 1, 2, when troubles come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has the chance to grow. So if you'll let it grow, and it will become fully developed, and you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You know, we overcome the trial and sorrow with growing faith, wisdom, character, Joy, peace, power from God. That's how we overcome it. You, you know, if you can have joy in your trials, why couldn't you have always be joyful? If you can have joy in your trials, you can always be joyful. Well, now you can, if you're always joyful, you can always be thankful. You can always experience God's peace. You can be content with whatever God has provided with you, a lot or a little. I'm telling you, you'll be like a person. For, you, you know, you will make your new year 
a happy. You will make it that way. <laughs> no one will be able to take it away. I mean, if you're a person like that, you're like from another planet. You're like a citizen of heaven. Sent down. You, you know, it's, you'd be like, like when Jesus said, you'll be my, I'll give you, the Spirit will give you power to be my witnesses. You'll be a witness. You know, you'll be like a supernatural sign and wonder of the reality and power of Jesus in the Bible in this world today. That will be you. Now, um, if your goal in life is to share more and more and more of the life and ministry of Jesus, like mine is, if you'd like to be like what you read in the Bible, like that's my goal, then you can, trials are an opportunity for great joy for you. And then sorrows are an opportunity of great peace for you. The peace of God, the supernatural, exceeds anything we can understand. Because God uses our perseverance in those things to produce a huge harvest. And so I'm not necessarily happy about the things going on, but I'm looking at that huge harvest. This is going to be good. And there's some things I've learned, and probably you have too, that you just can't learn without trials for whatever reason. You're just not going to learn. And there's certain things, the only way you can learn them is, is by trials. And the thing I really love about trials is sometimes I'm racking my brain trying to grow. I wish I could grow. And trials, it just happens. I don't know what happened, but after that trial, I'm a little different. That trials are a wonderful thing in our life um, if we have perseverance and understand what they're for. Um, my, my back was a very shocking trial to me, but I had faith in God's word to me. He spoke to me about it. He said, it's going to result in supernatural healing. It's going to result in spiritual growth in important ways for you. And it's also going to make you more of a healer yourself. And so I was able to have great joy by believing that. And, you know, um, the interesting thing for me about that is in a, in a sense you could say that my bad back was an answer to prayer. <laughs> I, and I actually thanked the God during the... Sometimes when the pain was bad, I just said, thanks. <laughs> I needed that. It's like, whack, thanks. <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm also dead serious. You know, and the pain and the um, threat of disability focused me and... The whole church. You say, we can't have that guy up there. What's the devil thinking? You know, it focused the whole church into the prayer of James 5.16. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. And I've told people, my, my needle was not moving. It, my back was just getting, which it naturally would do. It's a degenerative disease. It's a serious disease. Until the middle of those, that prayer and fasting, it went, and it's never stopped since then. It's just steadily... <laughs> Steadily moving up. That's wonderful results and powerful and wonderful results of prayer. And, fast, and trials have a way of just focusing you and causing us to be more intense and being diligent and getting after it. You know, it's, it's hard to ignore. Now, there's a scripture um, in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 12. This is, I like to call it my stairway to heaven um, scripture. Can we have that music in the background? No, I'm just kidding on that part. Second <laughs> Peter 1, uh, 3 and 12. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. These are astonishing statements. We can just shh, go right by. Every one is astonishing. We have everything we need. We're not waiting on God. He's waiting on us. We've received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So he took the initiative in your life. He's wanting to, to do a work in you. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. They're bombs. These are promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Verse 5, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. Here's the ladder. Here's the stairway. Faith to moral excellence. Supplement um, your moral excellence with knowledge. Knowledge with self-control. Self-control with patient endurance. And patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. And the more you grow like this, 
Just like the vegetables, you can have a little or you can have a lot. The more you grow like this, God will respond. If we're going for it, he's, 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 he's going to go for it in you. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you'll be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted and blind. They've forgotten that they've been cleansed from their own old sins. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you'll never fall away. 11, then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So maybe you've never got to be in one of those Super Bowl cars, you know, that go down after they win the championship. Well, you can get one in heaven. You will be in a great, it says you'll get a grand entrance from God himself um, as you go in. You can have that. You will be, that's, that's the kind of person uh, that we really are. God's made us his, ma- his masterpieces. It's not hype. It's scripture. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you've been taught. So these are conditional promises. Um, That means you can not benefit from them, even though, or you can. If we keep making, it says, if we keep making every effort, God will keep helping us grow into a godly life. And that godly life is not about keeping the rules better. It's actually coming to share the very nature of God which is incredible, truly righteous and holy. It's being like Jesus Christ. That's what that means. So faith, let me go over them real quick. Faith is in the word of God in the Bible and by the spirit too speaks to us, but that's where faith comes from God's word. Faith is not positive thinking. Faith is trusting God's word. Moral excellence is is knowing how to serve God and man, not just one or the other. Knowledge, that's how to apply the word of God to your life. Not just knowing it, but actually knowing how to apply it. That's, that's the kind of knowledge that this, that word means. Self-control over our desires and passions. We're not going... Woo, woo, woo. Patient endurance. Godliness to correctly love God and people. Both. Um, and then love for everyone, including our enemies. So the more we grow like this, it says, the more productive and useful we'll be. Um, it tells us to work hard. Do these things. And you'll never fall away. So, you know, the interesting thing to me is our patient endurance needs to be nourished. It's good to get thanks from people. You know, if if people would just thank me, I I could have endurance. Well, it's nice. People, we should thank people. The Bible even says encourage one another. But you don't, do you want to really seriously depend on other people for your perseverance? I don't. I'm not depending on other people. I hope I, I get it and I appreciate it, but I don't want it to to die because I don't have it. So, so perseverance is like an organ in a body. It is nourished by the other organs and it nurses the other organs. So your perseverance gets nourished as you develop these other virtues. And your perseverance makes these other virtues get nourished themselves. They get stronger and stronger. Um, and like I say, it's a real staircase to heaven because what it is, this is, this is the culture of heaven. As you take this into your spirit, you're actually bringing heaven onto earth. We're called to be a colony of heaven. You're called, it says you are a citizen of heaven. And and so this truly is a a stairway to heaven on earth. Um, A citizen of heaven represents Jesus and everything they say or do. And that's what we'll be able to do. So Philippians 1.6 says, I'm confident that God who began this good work in you, he started it. That's certainly true in my life. He who began this good work in you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day Christ Jesus returns. So God is working in you, and he has perseverance. He has perseverance to finish his eternal masterpiece in you. God has perseverance in helping you develop perseverance. He's going to keep helping you develop perseverance. Isn't that a wonderful thought? And even if you don't know what more to do, I can't think of anything. You know, I, I've been in, in, in places, and probably you have too. I've been, I'm so tired, I'm just going to open my Bible and go boink, and hopefully it's something good, because I, I don't have any energy. Even if you, you don't know what to do, you're at the end. You feel like giving up. There's a safety net even there. Hebrews 4, 16, an incredible safety net. It says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There you will receive mercy, and you will find grace to help you when you need it most. (laughs) 
When you, how many people have been there? When you need it most, I really need it. And God is there. Gra- look at the words in there. Gracious throne. You'll receive mercy. That means you don't get the bad you think you deserve. Grace, which means you get the good you don't think you deserve. I, I mean, those words, uh, mercy, receiving mercy and grace is receiving unearned favor. It's not limited at all by what you deserve. It's not limited that way. Instead, it's according to what Jesus Christ deserves because of the sacrifice he made for you in the heavens. He deserves it, and he wants to give it to you. And so Jesus Christ died and suffered and died on the cross and rose from the dead to pay the penalty, free us from the penalty of sins that we deserve. And instead, he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit that we don't deserve. What a deal. And, and he's happy doing it. He delight, delights in doing that. So Satan was totally humiliated and really defeated in our life by the cross. It just shocked him totally. Jesus whipped him without even a miracle. He didn't even use a miracle. And he defeated Satan as a man. And now Satan is really trying hard to get us to Live and act as if the cross never happened. Let's just all forget about that. He wants us to live um, without, as if we don't have the benefits of the cross. And 1 John 1, 9 says, no, no, no. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. So because, notice, faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. That means change us. That means because of what Jesus did for us, now you deserve it. It says it's faithful and just. Now, even though you follow me, even though we don't deserve it, really, Jesus did it. But because Jesus did it, now you deserve it. That's why it says, come boldly. Come boldly. It's yours. You deserve it. It's yours. Come boldly. It says, let's come boldly. Let's not come like you'd come to, you know, when I was a kid, and if you hit your ball over the wrong fence, oh, man, that neighbor's really mean. What are we going to do? And they got a mean dog. Knock, knock, knock. Oh. You know, it's not coming like that to a grumpy person that's going to yell at you. It's coming boldly to God, expecting a good mood and generous help. Amen. That's, that's, um, that's what we need. And instead of giving up, we just need to confess our sins. We need to accept our forgiveness. And then we need to ask for the supernatural help. Whatever you think you need, ask for the supernatural help that Jesus died for you to have. Don't give up. Have faith in God who hasn't given up and never gives up. So 1 Thessalonians 1.11 says, We keep on praying for you, asking God to give you, to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. And we've seen his call. It is so high. It's so high, God calls it a masterpiece. It's so high, it says, measure up to the full and complete standard of Christ. So it says, we pray for you so that God will enable you to live up to your calling, that high calling. And then it says, the big green light. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Hmm. Now, um, God will give us supernatural power to accomplish Um, our godly desires, but many of the New Year's resolutions are not godly desires. They're they're motivated out of selfishness or worldliness. And and James 1, 4 through 8 says, you know, it says, God will generously give wisdom to whoever asks. God will help you come up with really great resolutions that please him and, and that are the desires of your heart. But he says, but if your loyalty is divided between God and the world, trying to do both, this is a shocking verse. He says, you should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. That's the verse. So if we ask, God will give us the wisdom to turn our desires into godly desires, and then right away we have the supernatural power of God backing up our godly desires to make them happen. And it says then, 1 Thessalonians 1.12, then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live, and you are going to be honored along with him. And this is made possible, it's all made possible by the grace that comes from our God and Lord Jesus Christ. There's that grace again. And so really, you know, you can't lose if we persevere. God will persevere. We just have to not give up. Keep asking, trying, and growing. 
Now, researchers say one of the reasons why people, so many people fail at their New Year's resolutions, even in the natural, but it's also true in the spiritual, is because of, of unrealistic expectations. Man, I've been going to the gym for two weeks now. I'm still not ripped. Forget it. <laughs> Twelve days, you know. Plus, I drink that power, that powder, you know, they told me to drink, and it's got a ripped guy on the outside of it. You know, the, the, actually, the time management people say um, that we greatly overestimate, in general, we greatly overestimate what we can get done in a year. But we greatly underestimate how much we can get done in five years. And so I heard a Christian leader say it this way. He says, you should think big, but then start small and go deep. And of course, none of that matters unless you keep going. <laughs> That's the perseverance. 1 Timothy 4.7 says, train yourself to be godly. We, we, we can and need to train ourselves to be godly. In the natural, if you do not exercise or, or try and gain strength, you don't gain strength. It's the same in the spiritual. If you're not taking any efforts during the week, every day, to stay in shape, you can't stay in shape one day a week. And, and if we don't take those efforts, then we are not going to have that godly strength that we could have, we should have. Now, I put some ideas of how to train spiritually. There's many of them, but I put some in the back of the bulletin. But I, I would say you should start with that Bible one if you're not already doing that, um, you know, four times a day and see what happens. 2 Timothy 3.17 says God uses the Bible to prepare and equip his people for every good work. It's like a Swiss Army knife. You know, you use that, and he's covering a lot of ground. Now, the book of Acts, to me, it's, it's a picture of a huge harvest, if you wonder what Jesus meant when he says you'll have a huge harvest, you look in the book of Acts. You look at Jesus' life, because that's what he was having, and then you look in the book of Acts. It's a huge harvest in the lives of people, but also it was a huge harvest in the lives of churches. Well, because we live in the world we do, it's also a picture of Satan opposing the huge harvest, like, like sending in locusts and no, you know, just doing what he can to destroy it. And you can see ways that Satan used on them, and he still uses it today. He used persecution, and then he used distraction and compromise. Persecution, distraction, and compromise. So first, he stirred up citizens or government officials who were really angry or really misunderstood what was going on to try and intimidate them into being quiet. They'd yell at them or threaten them or put them in jail or, or anything to try and scare them into being quiet. And their response was, give us, O oh Lord, great boldness in preaching your word. That's how they prayed. They didn't pray, even pray for protection. They prayed, Lord, give us more boldness. <laughs> and by the way, stretch out your hand with healing power. And make miraculous signs and wonders happen on the earth. Well, the next thing that the devil tried was distraction. And he tried to get the apostles to quit doing what their calling was to do somebody else's calling. And the apostles responded by saying, hey, the whole church, we all need to work together. God has made many, many, all the parts are anointed. And so they started spreading out the work, like what Lena was talking about. And so they defeated Satan on that one as well. And then the third thing they tried was compromise. And compromise is starting to be divided between the world and God. And compromise um, is also... It's, it's hypocrisy, basically, in, in the church. And so, actually, in this particular instance, um, two people lied to the apostle, trying to appear better than they were, and they were struck dead, which that, I don't, you know, didn't happen again in the Bible, but it was sure a, a warning as to how seriously God takes that. And so, if we want to stay filled up with the Holy Spirit, because if we fail these tests, it quenches the Holy Spirit in us. But if we want to stay filled with the Holy Spirit and even add fuel to the fire, then we would want to accept boldness and focus and purity. We need to accept boldness. Don't be afraid. Spirit's not fear and timidity, but power, love, and self-control. Boldness. And then focus. What's important? Seek God's kingdom. And then purity. And when they went out and to, to encourage the churches, it says the apostles strengthened the believers and they encouraged them to continue in the faith, um, reminding them that we must suffer many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. 
And so we need to accept boldness, focus, purity, and patient endurance. And if we do that, then we can move right into our calling of representing Jesus all the time in what we say or do. Now, the Bible calls Abraham the father of faith because he's an example of what God will do in us. And Abraham was also the father of hoopamone. I mean, that guy had it. He had hoopamones. <laughs> Abraham was promised to bless the entire world. You'll bless every family in the earth. He was, he was promised to bless the nations and the generations in the world. And, but it all starts, it has a small beginning, a son. Because he's supposed to have a nation, it starts with a son. So God promised, yes, I'll give you a son. He waited 20 years every month. No, 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 no. 20 years. Now menopause came. Now it's impossible for us to have a son. But the promise is still there. Yes, you're going to have a son. And Romans 4.18, this is hoopamony. He says, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. <laughs> There it is. That's patient endurance. In fact, it says Abraham never wavered in believing um, God's promise. In fact, his faith grew even stronger, the fact that it was now impossible. It says he was fully convinced God is able to do what he promised. If you have the word of God, it's going to happen. And it's many times tested with the opposite. And it happened for him. Today, for many people, today is give up day. God says today is the day of salvation. Amen. Go to God and keep going and get past today, Amen. every day. We just got to get past today. Don't worry about tomorrow. God says I'll, tomorrow has words of itself. You get past today. 